Quick reminder that the description has a link to a resource website that you can use to help contribute to ongoing Black Lives Matter organizations. You can do a myriad of things like donate to bail funds or sign petitions, all of which go a long way to fighting systemic racism. Thank you very much for your time. Hello everyone! Golden Nova here. We have a few more cards to catch up on in Blazing Vortex, but since talking about Armed Dragon Thunder would require me to go through a whole slog of other cards for context, we'll be talking about the only other choice we have, Security Force. Now, I know what you're thinking. Nova, what about the time-honored acronym ASFAB? And trust me, I have not forgotten that all security forces are bastards, but if we want to overcome these servants of the state, we need to understand them first. So, without further ado, it's time to introduce the executive executors who operate in oppressive operation. Let's lock things down with the security force. But before we continue, a quick reminder to please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed my content so far. 1500 subs is my end of year goal, and you can help make it happen. We also have a Discord where we double sleeve our cards now, and you can also follow me on Twitter if you want to stay in the know on channel updates and my bad takes. Thank you for your patience, and now, back to the video. So, what's the deal with Security Force? Well, it's hard to tell. Their typing and attributes are all over the place. It's hard to tell if they're a benevolent force for justice, or a corrupt gang of officials with too much power. In fact, the most we know about them is their relation to other archetypes. In this image, we can see one of the Security Force staring down Time Thief Redoer, their pistol mysteriously emblazoned with their sigil, and in this one, they're fighting Ciphering Driver. And what gets me is that this isn't even coming out of left field. Driver's flavor text name drop Security Force all the way back in 2015. Back then, I just thought it was a reference to 5D Sector Security, but now I have to question if that was ever the case, or if this was the plan all along. Anyway, while the Security Force doesn't have any uniting stats, their effects all work under the same general theme, and it shares a lot in common with Mech Knights. Generally, you apply a debuff of some kind to your opponent's monsters that are in the same column as your Security Forces, and each one has a unique kind of effect that applies in all valid instances. So, if you have one Security Force in the same column as an opponent's monster, it'll apply its debuff to them. If you have two security forces in the same column as two of your opponent's monsters, both enemy monsters will suffer both debuffs. And if you have two security forces, but only one of them is in the same column as an opponent's monster, only that one monster will be affected, but both debuffs will apply. Also, to keep things simpler for both you and me, anytime a security force is in a column, I'm just going to call it a security column. So, with that quick primer out of the way, let's get started with the main deck monsters. Rapachiomaru is a level 2 Dark Warrior monster with 800 attack and 1000 defense. Each opponent's monster in a security column can only target monsters in its own column for attacks, severely limiting your opponent's offensive options. Also, as a quick effect, you can banish a security card in your hand to return Rapa to your hand, and if you do, you special summon any security force monster from your deck in defense position except another copy of itself. This is useful for a number of reasons. One, despite having a very battle-oriented effect, their stats are pretty low, so this gives them the opportunity to scurry out of harm's way and appear in a more fortuitous column later on. Two, some of our most important security forces are higher than level 4, so having an easier way to summon them is going to do wonders for getting your game plan online. Also, bonus for me, they have excellent taste in rhythm games. Professor Di Gamma is a level 3 dark psychic monster with 1000 attack and 1500 defense. If they're normal or special summoned, you can target one face-up monster your opponent controls and change their battle position. Also, your opponent's monsters in security columns can't change their battle position except by a card effect. This is another good way to suppress your opponent's monsters, though not in the long term. You can defense mode or non-link monster and keep it tied down, but nothing stopping your opponent from summoning an attack position and dealing with you that way. The most interesting thing here is their connection to Cyframe Driver. The two share a lot of visual motifs, and they are fighting in this picture. They also share a name with the most popular Cyframe gear, Gamma, so I'm sure once we get some more support and lore tidbits, the Professor will have more than a thing or two to teach us. Orifice. Do I really have to call it that? I've heard Officer, but... I'm just gonna stick with the Yugi Organization translation again on this until the official release, but... <sighs> anyway, Security Force Orifice is a level 4 light Cybers monster with 1800 attack and 1000 defense. While they're on the field, your opponent's monsters in security columns can't be targeted by your opponent's effects. 
This is a rather unique way to lock your opponent down, essentially cutting off ways for your opponent to interact with their own board. This all but shuts down Affected Majestus, as well as any other theme that relies on equipping cards to your own monsters. But outside that, I'm actually not sure how this helps. Virtual World does a lot of self-targeting, but they have the option to target their spells and traps as well. Dinos kind of do this with Soul Eating Overraptor, but unless you have any quick effect column changers available, or your board is just that stocked up, your opponent's gonna know exactly how to play their cards to get around yours. Thankfully, they have another effect that you can use when your opponent activates the effect of a monster on their field. When they do, you can banish a Security Force card in your hand to destroy that monster. It doesn't negate, but depending on the effect, it could be just as effective. And having the option to treat your other on-theme cards as Ghost Ogres is a great way to throw the book at your opponent. Now we have Gravitino, and this is where things get good. They're a level 5 light psychic monster with 2000 attack and 1400 defense. If they're a normal or special summoned, you can add any security force card from your deck to your hand, and while they're on the field, your opponent's monsters that are in a security column are banished if they leave the field. So not only do you have a searcher for the theme that you can summon off of Rappa, you have a very selective macro cosmos to stop those annoying graveyard synergies. It's also going to test your opponent's knowledge of your deck, because to avoid losing, they're going to have to understand the gravitino of the situation. Our last main deck monster is Platina, a level 6 dark spellcaster with 2200 attack and 2000 defense. If they're normal or special summoned, you can special summon any of your banished security force monsters, making it arguably an even better summon off of Rappa than Gravitino, depending on how you can set up your banished zone. Also, while they're on the field, your opponent's monsters in security columns lose 600 attack. Interestingly enough, while the rest of the debuffs you have don't meaningfully stack if you have multiples, this one does. 600 is already a pretty substantial loss, but 1200? That's the kind of bureaucratic red tape that'll keep your opponent's monsters busy for a long, long time. The last member of the Security Force team is Justify, and you can probably already see that things are gonna get a little nutty. They're a Link 3 light Cybers monster with 2600 attack, all arrows pointing towards your opponent's field, and requires three effect monsters, including at least one security force, so it's kinda splashable. Just don't run it with anything that requires links, they're not gonna be too happy. As with all Link monsters that have two diagonal up arrows, they have an effect where you cannot summon or set monsters to zones they point to, because Konami is a coward that won't let us V-Link. Anyway, as a quick effect, you can target an opponent's monster your opponent controls, negate its effects until the end of the turn, then drag that monster into any of your opponent's zones that it points to. Also, if Justify attacks, at the start of the damage step, you can banish every monster it points to, which is outrageous. Since you can use Justify's effect to move monsters during either player's turn, you can essentially line things up so you have at least two monsters in range of Justify's banishing effect. And as it turns out, non-target banishing is an outstanding standing form of removal. They're also an important tool for manipulating your opponent's board. While they don't provide a debuff of their own, they still make whatever column they're in a security column. So pairing them with just one more security force means you can reasonably lock down two monsters, which will more than justify the investment. Okay, time for the support cards. Security Force Bridgehead is a field spell that searches you a member of the theme on activation. How original. Also, if an opponent's monster attacks your security force in the same column as it, the field spell keeps it from being destroyed by that battle. However, this is no Dragonic Diagram. You only get the protection one time for one monster per turn. A bit underwhelming, but while I'm glad it provides at least some level of protection, that means I won't feel too bad splashing it into a deck that does need their field spell, which means it'll at least be good at bridging the gap. Security Force Showdown is a quick play spell that features the showdown between Orifice and Redoer. When you activate it, you can choose either one of two effects. You can special summon a Security Force monster from your hand, or add a Security Force monster from your grave to your hand. While it is not a play starter, it does mean you can drop a Security Force onto the field at quick effect speed, making a security column when your opponent thought they were safe. And if a card like Rappa gets stuck in your grave, it's a good way to get them back. It's a really strong show of Security Force. Our last card is the normal trap, Security Force Specimen. You can activate it while your opponent controls a monster by targeting it, and then you summon to your field a Security Force that's banished or in your grave to the column of the targeted monster. Also, while it's in the grave, you can banish Specimen and target one of your Security Forces to move it to another one of your main monster zones, though keep in mind that you can only activate one effect per turn, and only once per turn. This is just another great way to get your monsters back on board, and in just the right columns. And if your opponent tries to evade arrest, it's got a built-in senate switch you can use to pursue the perp. 
quite the interesting specimen if you ask me. So we've gone over the lineup, what's the strategy? Well, our main offensive monsters have some pretty decent attack stats while also putting a bit of a freeze on our opponent's actions, so I'm thinking we'll want to go mid-range, attempting to cut off our opponent's options while we can, then cutting loose for big aggro swings when the opportunity presents itself. But what can we play to help? Something to keep in mind is that, the more we commit to splashing in monsters from outside the theme, the weaker our hold on our opponent ends up being. Any monster we control that's not a security force ends up generating a zone that's guaranteed safe haven for our opponent's monsters. Justify can help hedge against that, but it's not a perfect solution, and if your opponent can play around it, it's fair to say that they will. With that in mind, we probably want to add mostly spell or trap cards, or big game enders that will help close things out. And speaking of that last one, it's so nice that our entire team is made up of lights and darks that want to be banished. While Rappa and Orifice will end up banishing our cards, we're going to be sending quite a few to the grave to link summon for Justify, and Blackluster Soldier, Envoy of the Beginning, has never stopped being an incredible payoff for Chaos decks. And bonus, it gets your security forces out of the grave, so they'll be in range of Platina's revival effect. Another theme I'm always looking for a home for is Nemesis. While you generally want to keep all your security forces banished, sometimes you just gotta recycle your resources, and Nemesis make for excellent free material to help make Justify. And the Arch Nemeses don't make for bad payoffs either. They can't be destroyed by effects, they're a board wipe, and a lockout. I'm honestly surprised these haven't taken off yet. There Can Be Only One functions remarkably well in this deck. While we do have two cases of type overlap, one is a pretty clear choice over the other. And since banishing isn't a complete turn ender for you, Dimension Shifter may be able to fully shine here where it couldn't before. And while this is a bit of an outside pick, Iron Dragon Tiamaton can be used to punish your opponent for not playing your game. See, the funny thing about Tiamaton is, while a column on the board needs to have three or more cards for you to summon them, it doesn't have to be the column they're summoned to. Using Justify, you can pretty easily set up a column to get their effect online, and if your opponent tries to play around your security columns, you can just quick effect drop Tiamaton out of your hand to blast them, and on top of that, you've locked out one of the save zones your opponent could use to play Keep Away. And that's all I've got to say on Security Force. I think the groundwork for a solid strategy is here, and while I don't think it has the explosive starters or the stalwart negators that would be needed to compete with the upper tiers, I'm curious to see if a little more support in later sets could cover one of those two deficiencies, because as a strategy that focuses on putting a damper on your opponent's plays, I think it's a huge success. I'm looking forward to playing them, even if it does make me a huge class traitor. But now, I want to hear what you all think. Will the security force rise to meet their civic duty, or are they going to be too busy arguing that they aren't constitutionally obligated to assist your dueling? Let me know in the comments, and if you haven't already, please make sure to like and subscribe. If you want to help me out even more, please share this video around. If you stayed until now, I'm pretty sure you enjoyed it, and I'm sure someone you know will too. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye